We are going live in five, four, three, two, one. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Sunshine Show. <laughs> Woo! Where I interview some of the coolest people on the planet and we talk about whatever the fuck we want to talk about. Isn't that right, Reggae Lou? Damn street. <laughs> <laughs> I have Reggae Lou in the house tonight, all the way from Florida. How's it going? Going good, man. Uh, definitely staying busy. For sure. Uh, yeah. We've been playing so many shows lately that it's it's almost started to feel like it's back to normal again, you know. Normal? What is normal? I have no idea. Uh, playing like seven nights a week. I think that's normal. Wow. <laughs> that is crazy. Um, Reggae Lou, for people that may not be familiar with you, can you give us a little bit of an introduction? Okay. Um, well, I'm a Sacramento native. I moved to Michigan about 25 years ago. I played reggae there for about, uh, about 13 years, I think. And then I started touring the country by myself as a solo looper. And I toured the whole United States by myself what, four times. And then uh, I think the fifth time Tropidelic picked me up and had me open for them as a solo looper. And then I toured with a whole band that I built after touring with Tropidelic. They kind of gave me the idea. They were like, dude, like you play all the instruments. Why don't you just teach a band to do all the instruments for you? So I did. And then we went on tour and then um, came back home to Michigan, then we toured to Mexico then, and played with uh, Synergy at their Rosarito Reggae Fest down there in Mexico. That was pretty dope. And then uh, came back to Michigan and then decided I wanted to move to San Diego. So I moved out there for a while to make my name in there, in that scene. And uh, did that for a couple years, played pretty much every place in that area. And then, um, moved here and now I've played from the top to the bottom from Jacksonville to Key West and everywhere in between on the east coast yeah wow super impressive um I remember the last time I saw you we had just played a show with Audic Empire and we had a dance party in the parking lot of Winston's um down in Ocean oh, Beach. <laughs> yeah um, and it was super fun. And I guess those were the RV days when you were living out of the RV with your family. Um, and it was super badass. Can you tell us a little bit about how that came to be, how you ended up living in the RV? Well, we were paying like, I don't know, it was a ridiculous amount of money to live in San Diego. And uh, we decided that we wanted to minimalize. <coughs> so we just took everything down and moved it into the RV. And started just traveling all up and down lower california just finding all the cool spots and we went to a lot of different rv parks most of them were like um i guess more of this catering towards the senior citizens so with the family it was a little bit different you know and but it was a cool experience definitely um an eye-opening experience and a learning experience because you have to constantly work together and you're in such a confined space that you have no other choice than to be chill <laughs> because otherwise you're just going to lose your mind all the time, you know, but it was, it was a very uh, humbling experience to say the least. Um, it seemed like super fun times. You kind of almost had a family band going on. Yeah, right? definitely. <laughs> uh, it's, it seems like that seems how, how it works, you know, um, best for me anyways like uh as of right now like all of my band lives really close and we all are with each other most of the days of the week so it's more like a family than just a band you know it's everybody's like around each other all the time which is good because you know when you're on tour you like to know who you're working with and what better way than to be with them all the time. Then you're like, Oh, well, I know what to expect on tour because I'm with this dude all the time, you know? So. Yeah. It's, it's a way of life, right? It's a way of life for sure. For sure. And it's definitely, uh, 
an abstract difference compared to the nine to five lifestyle for sure. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Let's take a look at these comments really quick. See what we have in the chat. Jen Armstrong, what is up, Jen? What up, Jen? <laughs> Lindsay, Zane, Scott, Weiss, what's up, Scott? I'm always repping Underground Roots Clothing here at the Sunshine Show. Uh, we got Megan, we got Chris, and we got Marcio in the house. Thank you all for joining us tonight. We got Ray Ray too. Uh, you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments and we will get to those ASAP. Um, sick reggae Lou. So tell me what has life been like for you over this past year with the pandemic? Um, to be honest, I really, I moved to Florida thinking I was going to do a solo show here and I connected with people over the last year and a half and it totally just changed what I thought I was doing here, you know, and then the pandemic hit and literally right when the pandemic hit the day before they shut everything down we were playing in key west and they shut down the street and we're playing right in the middle of the street in front of i don't know a bunch of people and then we're on the way home from key west and we get a call like everything's shutting down like and then literally like 40 gigs canceled and we had just built this this pretty tight band and we were all super bummed. So we had like three, four months off after that. You know? But it was, it was, a, it was a messed up experience because I was getting ready to the next week when we were on our way back from Key West, the next week after that, we were supposed to play with Freddie McGregor. And I was just like, no way, we're playing with Freddie McGregor. This is crazy, you know? And then everything got canceled. Oh. But so you mentioned that you guys had three months off and then you started playing shows again. And I've been watching you very closely as I've li been living vicariously through you as you are one of a few artists that have still been rocking and rolling throughout this entire time. So you took a three month break, but after that, you've pretty much been playing shows every night of the week, right? Well, it was, it was like, it was like, two or one at first then two then three it slowly creeped its way back up but like even as it was creeping back up every now and then everything would get shut back down so we'd end up going back down to like one show a week and at one point it was back to zero shows a week again and we were just like well i guess we're gonna be chilling you know <laughs> writing music now you know but then it just started opening up more and more and now like i said it's it's probably like 75 percent down here now Wow, that's fucking crazy. That's so, like, it just seems like a whole different world compared to here in Cali where we've just been like completely shut down and then seeing, you know, other people in other states still just fucking going at it. And uh, I'm a little jealous, I'm just gonna say. <laughs> um, and you actually have a tour coming up with Audic Empire and Peter Dante. Um, and you guys have like a shitload of shows, right? Yeah, we got Oh, well, we got like four out here and four over there. And then we got like uh, four days off in between that we're going to be playing some local shows here that possibly may have a special guest on the four days here that we're on. So, yeah. Nice. Um, so what was that like booking that? Was it hard? Was it pretty easy? Well, I mean, it was a little tough, you know, considering the situation like, uh, just everybody is really standoffish about booking, you know, people that are touring right now more than more than ever before, just because of all the situations and the stipulations, you know, and just all of the guidelines that have to be met and everybody, you know, just being on board with doing the right thing. And it's been, it's been a tough, road but we made it work you know we made it uh, a possibility without any you know major booking agencies helping us do any of it it was all diy it was all me and ronnie basically and then we had a couple help a help from a couple shows that were just other bands that were willing to be like yeah dude we'll we'll put you up over here too so we'll throw this date on there and it just worked out really well because of people helping us make it happen you know and, it's a really cool family that this uh, reggae family has become, you know, just everybody seems to be like 
you know, down to help at any time. And that's super awesome. You know, it makes it easier for us to be able to do these DIY tours, you know. For sure, 100%. We cannot do it without the fans. Um, we have so far up in the comments. What's up, fam? Bam! What up, Drew? I love you, bro. We love you. Uh, we got Jesse Duran. We got Don McDaniel Troy Wood. What up? Danny. Yes, I'm wearing the J Speak Lane. Speak the Rebel shirt. You guys go get yours exclusively at jspeaklane.com. I think that's his website. I'm not really sure, but uh, I will look it up after we were done and I will drop it in the comments. Um, six, so when I went to your page, it says you are an international touring multi-instrumentalist. Can, <laughs> yeah. can, can you tell us about all the instruments that you play regularly? Well, when I was doing the solo loop show, I would play like bass, guitar, um, ukulele, trumpet, and saxophone, and a MIDI, MIDI drum set. Wow. And, and I would bring that to every show, and I did it for like, I don't know, like 300 shows. And then I was like, I'm just going to, you know, knock it down to like bass and guitar and just like beat on my guitar and use my mouth for percussion and just run with that because it was just an easier setup. But people really seemed to dig when I was doing like the, the trumpet and saxophone. And then I would like walk out in the crowd with the saxophone and stuff. And it was, it was fun, but yeah, I play all that. And then I'm not really great at any of it. I just play it all, you know, and I was so humble. You're so humble. Okay. You're not great at any of it, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I play it all, you know, and I have fun doing it, you know, and that's really, I think that is the selling point for almost my whole career is people just see that I'm actually having fun doing what I'm doing on stage. And then they're just like, well, that's contagious. Like let's have him come back, you know? And, and that's really how it's worked for me. It's just because I love what I do. And I quit my nine to five like nine years ago now, and I've just been doing music all over the country for about that time. And, and I, I don't want to do anything else and I don't care to retire. I'm happy doing this for the rest of my life. And um, I've been through all the ups and downs, you know, I, I had a big band, it broke up. I joined another band as a bass player for their band and it was great. And I really thought that it was going to be like the next big thing, you know, and I was just a bass player, but I was content and being just involved in it because it was so fun, you know, and you know what band I'm talking about, I'm sure. But um, those guys were on the road for a long, long time. And I looked up to all of them and just to be able to go on tour with that captain for two and a half months, man, it was like a whole different world because I was always like a I was a reggae musician, you know, I always wanted to play the root stuff and like, um, like just the old school rhythms, you know, and when I went on tour with them, they were anything but that they were literally their own style of music. And it was just amazing because their genre mashups and their, their harmonies and just everything that was about that captain, I really thought was like something straight out of like the Goonies mixed with music. And it was just amazing. And Mark Mark Ward, sweetheart, you know, like truly, like I love that. So. Yeah, Mark is uh, actually, I don't know if he's from, he's from Texas, I believe. Um, but a lot of the guys in that captain, they actually were from Corpus Christi. And I grew up in Kingsville, which is like really close to Corpus. So that's like my old stomping grounds. So it's so funny how Mark moved to California and there was like this transition that kind of like we were following each other. Um, but I love that band. What would you describe, if you had to describe that captain, like what would you describe their genre of music? Well, they're listed as folk and, folk and reggae like folk and reggae you know but um i would say it's almost like spaghetti western or like um let me think of yeah that's similar like um very americana e like just it was a definitely a totally different genre of music that i've ever played and it was fun and there was like everybody in the band could sing 
for the most part harmonies any anywhere and it was a it was an amazing experience and then just watching mark's whole story about the whole boat situation and it was unfolding as i'm on this tour bus with everyone and i just got to be a part of all of that and it was just like like i was saying it was like the goonies like it really was and it was really uh an opportunity of a lifetime and i'm glad that i got to be a part of that you know and i'm sure that in the future that dude will be all over the world just like he wanted to be and i wish them nothing but the best oh yeah i think right now he is in new mexico yeah, so. um, and he's been putting out a few videos that I've seen and um, they're almost sort of like leaning towards like the Texas country sort of type music and it's fucking phenomenal. I love everything that Mark does. Um, so shout out to Mark Board. Uh, wherever you are, brother, we love you. Love you. Um, what yeah. is up, Chris Luna? Aloha from Hawaii. Uh, Jay Speak Lane, what's up? Speak the Rebel in the house. Thank you all, fam bam, for hanging out with us tonight. Sunshine Zimmer, what's up, girlfriend? <laughs> um, yeah, man, I think I saw Mike in here. All you guys, thank you guys. Lisa, what's up? Um, cool. So after that, Captain, you sort of, you transitioned into making your own band, or how did that work? Yeah, I did for a little bit in San Diego, but it just... It didn't quite work out how I was hoping, unfortunately, and um, we didn't we didn't um, take it too much further than that. And after that happened, I was like, "Dude, I'm going to Florida." I toured through Florida prior to living in San Diego, like four times, four different times, through the part of Florida that I live in now. And um, there was this place down here called ER Bradley's in West Palm, and every time I played it. I played it with Tropodelic, I played it with that captain, I played it as a duet, and every time it was the best tour stop on the tour. And I was just like, dude, I want to live in this place. Like, it's so beautiful. There's just tiki's everywhere, and the ocean's right there, and there's a bunch of yachts, and there's people who love reggae music. I should probably be living there. And I said that over and over again over the years, and then finally one day I was just like, I'm going to do it. Like, I had some buddies down here called Spread the Dub, and they are like, uh, they're just amazing. And they, they were, yeah, dude, if you, if you come down here, there's literally not enough bands to play down here. And they were right. And I have capitalized because of it. And I've been playing up until COVID, I was playing almost every single day. And then when COVID hit, it changed everything. But do, doing that, playing almost every single day, I started running an open mic and then people started coming in and then I just built this band from people that were coming into the open mics and they were really friendly. And now it's evolved into this band now that we have, it's like, we have like this ridiculous drummer that writes and he's fast raps and he just does all of this crazy stuff. But he's amazing harmonies too and, and vocalists just all around. And then um, our trumpet player, who also is like a third part harmony and he could take over the melody at any point. And then our bass player now that's like, he's a guitarist and bass player. So we swap, like I'll play bass on some of the songs that he sings. So every one of us, all four of us in the band sing. And then we have, yeah. And then we have Adrian Garcia, who's like the wild card. He flies in from Mexico and plays with us a few months out of the year. And he is the, baddest dub reggae like scientist i'm talking like he has a crazy pad uh what is that called um, a chaosolator that he dubs out and it's just the gnarliest like most like intricate lines that i've ever heard anybody play on reggae dub music and then he plays his melodica with all kinds of crazy delays on that stuff too and it's like built into the whole conglomeration that is his little science factory <laughs> he's just he's a beast wow, how fun <laughs> have you guys put out an album yet or working on the album um we actually have a full album of music right now we have 15 songs and what we've been planning on doing is just releasing one a month and we're going to try to do videos with each one of them so that way 
we release it with all this awesome content behind it too so that way every every song that we have as of right now are like four-part harmony like real like all of us are pouring everything into it so we're just gonna do every song we're gonna make it so every song gets its justice you know and then maybe after we do 12 or something we'll release the ep with all the songs on it but I think that's what we're going to try to do is just release one a month or one every other month or some whatever it takes to get them all out there with all the videos behind them and everything. You know? Oh my God, that's exciting. Um, do you want to play a song for us? We have a good amount of people watching right now. Thanks everybody for hanging out. Um, can we get a little taste of the music? Sure. Uh, what's up, Chris Luna? Sounds like you would love living in Hawaii. Hawaiian had its own reggae style called Jawaiian. Nice. Hawaiian. Jay says, so much enthusiasm for the music. I love it. Everybody wants to hear you play. Oh, Weej, I've heard a lot of great things about reggae Lou from my Florida peeps. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I love it down here, man. And just the fact that it stays warm pretty much most of the year is what really sold me too. Just knowing that my guitar isn't going to go out of tune that often. <laughs> <laughs> but there are a few months here where it's pretty hardcore hot. Like, I almost couldn't take it at a couple shows. Key West almost killed me a few times. It was so dang hot there. It was like... Uh, I always wanted to move to Key West. It's so beautiful here, but at the same time, I was like, man, I don't know if I'll be able to make it. I'm going to have to lose at least 40 or 50 pounds to live in this place. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard mom. My mom says she wants to go to Hawaii, too. We're all going to go to Hawaii together. That's my next stop. <laughs> um, let's see. Lindsay says that cap sounds like a reggae slash tiger army mashup. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I love that captain, man. They, they, I definitely still hear Mark's songs in my head all the time. Like, there's so They're many. catchy. There's catchy. He's a hell of a songwriter, for sure. All right. Um, I'll just do uh, one that we just released recently um, called Fire. It's on uh, Spotify. <laughs> Now, this is a song that we do with like five people, so it's going to sound a little different just me doing it on the guitar, honestly. Hey, do you want to? Want to smoke some fire marijuana? Hey, do you want to? Just forget about the drama, smoke some fire marijuana. ba ba da ba ba da bum bum ba da ba 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 well, the world is crumbling down. What are you gonna do? Yeah, you know you gotta be yourself. Yeah, to yourself you gotta be true. Yeah, the curtain call and yes, this show is for me and you. So I light one up, pass it around, sunshine. I'm passing it to you. Yeah, do you wanna? Do you wanna smoke some fire marijuana? Yeah, do you wanna? Just forget about the drama, smoke some fire marijuana. What? Ba ba da ba ba da ba ba. Ba 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 da ba ba. Ba 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 ba. Ba 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 ba. All right, so that was uh. Ricky's Ricky's vocals right there. That was our drummer's lead. Now this is my part. Since I was a young boy, I always loved that green. Growing in my backyard, it never bothered me. So I took a leaf and I put it in my food. Every day I've been strictly green since. Legalize it and you can be too. Yeah, do you wanna? Do you wanna smoke some fire marijuana? I said, yeah, do you wanna? Just forget about the drama, smoke some fire marijuana. Whoa, ba ba da ba ba da ba ba, hey, ba ba da ba ba da ba ba, ba ba da ba ba da ba ba, ba ba da ba ba da ba ba. And then we got this other guy. His name's Rigel. He comes and uh, spits on the mic every now and then, does some patois stuff. He's uh, from Trinity, I believe. 
He's like, Give me the weed, sweet ganja weed, or I did all my smoke with me. Give me the weed, sweet ganja weed, or I did all my smoke with me. Give me the weed, sweet ganja weed, or I did up and gone smoke with me. Give me the weed, sweet ganja weed, or I did all. Hey, do you wanna? Do you wanna smoke some fire marijuana? I said, yeah, do you wanna? Just forget about the drama, smoke some fire marijuana. Forget about the drama, folks. Let's just smoke the fire marijuana. Boom, boom, boom. Fuck yeah, dude. I love that shit, dude. That's um, a fun thing, man. I don't think I've heard any of your solo project yet, to be honest. Just well, I mean, the stuff that you post, um, like your live shows and stuff. I guess I have heard that, but I haven't heard anything with like the full band and the five piece vocals and stuff. So I'm excited. Oh, it's um, fun, man. It's definitely. It feels like a wall, you know, like when you got so many people. It's just like. Yeah. Well, so will the whole band be going on tour? Yep, uh, Adrian's flying in from Mexico even, so we'll have like the whole band plus keys. So it'll be it'll be a really good full sounding show. Yeah. How fun! What are you guys going to be traveling in? Um, we'll actually be. We just got a new bus down here. It's like a 2020 um, Ford. Uh, it's like a Sprinter. What is it called? Uh, Transit. So it's like yeah, it's. A 15 passenger, it's all blacked out, it's all, it looks like, uh, like, like a, like a freaking Amazon truck. That's what it looks like, really. Perfect. Yeah, it works out great. It's comfy and it's definitely the most affordable vehicle that I've ever driven in that could fit this many players. Plus, like, it can hold 7,000 pounds, so you can haul a big ass trailer with all the gear in the back, so you got you can hold 15 people, plus you got a trailer that can hold all the gear, so everybody in the front feels comfortable instead of being, like, smashed up like sardines like usual, you know, because that's been my situation many tours, you know. It happens. It definitely happens. We got Victoria Lee in the comments. What's up, girl? Another Hello, Victoria. Uh, we got Chris Luna. Chris Luna. Apparently, he's adopting my mother. I don't know what's going on in the comment section over here. <laughs> <laughs> We're all going to Hawaii and uh, Mama Hawaii is real. <laughs> um, thank you all for hanging out. Everybody is saying you did a phenomenal job on the music. We are just loving the reggae Lou tonight. Thank you for hanging out with us. Um, so you were talking about pulling gear in a trailer. Let's talk a little bit about your setup and your rig and your favorite instruments to play, favorite guitar, amps. Okay. Well, to be honest with you, we have eliminated amps in uh, this band. So we just run everything off of our pedal boards and then a DI from our pedal board into our PA system. Wow. Like, we, cool. we dumped it all into the PA system. So we have this PA that we just run off the iPad and the sound is impeccable. Like uh, we have monitors on each side. So everything's stereo sound. We have in-ears, but we rarely ever use them just because the most of the shows now that we're playing aren't those big, like, you know, live nation venues that have huge stages. You know, most of them are littler places, except for like Tin Roof. We play that place pretty regularly and they have a nice big stage and the capabilities, but we still don't use the interiors that much. Actually, we still use our own monitors and stuff. Was it weird to transition from actual amps to just the PA? Totally. Um, we still use a bass amp, but like my guitar, I don't use a guitar amp anymore. And there's really no reason for it, I think, you know, because unless I'm using like a Fender Twin Reverb or like the, you know, the old fashioned tube amp that I'm really going for that tone with, mm -hmm. the PA system with a good board and a good line out box sounds pristine it sounds just as good as any amp i've ever used on stage and i would prefer it at this point just to not have to carry an amp i think i've played maybe 
like 3,000 shows at least at this point in my life. And the last thing I want to do at this point is like haul another amp. <laughs> so I'm, I'm definitely down to haul some lightweight PA speakers anytime. Wow. Well, that's one way to fucking cut down on equipment and cut down on, on space. Uh, yep. And space is money, as we know that. Every little square foot is fucking money, man, because you need mm -hmm. to uh, have as much space as possible, especially when you're going on long tours from California to Texas and back. It's much easier to Tetris out stuff when you don't have those huge ass amps to deal with, for sure. Yeah. Um, so what about your guitar? Did we talk about your guitar already? Um, I, right now, I play a Fender Strat. Okay. And I've always had a Gibson Les Paul studio for like the last 15, 18 years. And that was like my go-to for so long. And then like just over the last couple of years, I was like, man, I just want something lighter, something with, you know, an equal tone, you know? So I started going through all the guitars. I was just like, I want to try everything see which one fits the best for me i did the you know the gretch and uh the uh, i don't know just a whole bunch of different brands of guitars and i ended up going with a fender strat it seemed to stay in tune the longest it has a really nice like bluesy kind of tone to it which in reggae music to me like some of the best reggae guitarists are those bluesy sounding guitarists like like bob's guitarist like hits those really soulful notes and to me the fender strat does that justice you know that in my personal opinion yeah yeah for sure um cool very cool so let's talk about songs and songwriting you said you've played with hundreds of bands and you've played probably three thousand shows how many songs are in your discography reggae lou what do you mean originals or like covers or like all? Um, <laughs> yeah, let's. What about all? What all do you have in the bank up there? Oh God, um, I probably learned uh, hundreds and hundreds of songs at least. But um, as far as like what we're doing now, we have like maybe fifty to seventy-five songs that's in our catalog right now. Um, about. 20 of them are originals. Okay. And what is your songwriting process like? It's funny, we were just talking about that the other day. My buddy said that he does like um, a driving job. So he's always got like his notepad on his phone and he's always writing in it and stuff. And that's what I've done for years is just use my notepad in my phone. Whenever I become inspired by any kind of music, I'll just grab my phone and jot down an idea and then Sometimes it'll be like a straight up, like I woke up and then all of a sudden I had this crazy idea and I just wrote it down. And then the next day I look at it and I'm like, oh yeah, that's rad. That came from a dream. Like I really try to use that kind of um, stuff for inspiration. Like somebody told me a long time ago, and I don't even know if this is true or not, but um, like there's a point like right before you go to sleep and um sometimes a, a song will come in your head or something like right before you go to sleep and if you can catch that shit and write it down that ends up becoming some of the best music and so i put that idea to a test and i've done it a few different times and i have like four songs that i play regularly that are those songs where I, it was literally like right before i went to bed i heard something going on in my head and i was like i'm gonna write that down real quick Wow, so yeah. to everybody at home, if you want to write fire ass songs like Reggae Lou, you need to sleep with a journal by your bed. And don't forget the pen, folks, because you're not going to want to get up in the middle of the night to go get your pen. It's real. It's real. <laughs> but also, like, sometimes I just from hearing a song, like, I'll hear a song and I'll be like, wow, that's, that's really neat. I want to do something like that. And then I'll uh, just start formulating my own song that's similar to that idea you know um but ronnie was actually talking to me ronnie from audit he was talking to me about songwriting a few weeks back and uh, we basically we were just we we're kind of both on the same um idea length as far as like you just come up with like one idea like just 
boom, there's an idea. And then you just write about that idea. And the whole song is encompassing that one idea and touching on it throughout the whole song. And then, you know, finishing it up with um, something that you said right at the beginning, right at the end also, like just so it becomes full circle and you're, it's a story, a storytelling kind of way. You know? Yeah, I think those are um, some of the best songs, or at least a lot of my favorite songs. And the way that I write a lot is like storyteller type mode. I'm always trying to like tell a story. And maybe yeah. all songs are like that, but I feel like some are more like prevalent and like, you know, storytelling. Um, yeah, but that's fucking awesome. Um, let's see, what did last year teach you? Oh gosh. Patience. Um, definitely had to learn how to be patient because there's no being able to to rush it when COVID's happening. And I just learned to sit back and reflect more and and you know think before I did things and just learned a lot of patience for sure. Yeah, definitely um, taught, I think, a lot of people patience. Um, and I think some people are still struggling to learn how to adapt to this, like, new life or this, like, new normal. Um, do you have advice for people that may be struggling to, like, get through, still try to get through this? Because it seems like you kind of already had to, like, you know, take a break and, like, you're back at music, you're about to go on tour. I think a lot of people are still, like, sitting at home. Um, so what advice do you have to those people that kind of don't see an end? Well, I mean, I look at it as, like, you know, history repeats itself. And um, I think that goes, I don't like talking politics too much, but I think that goes for, like, you know, all the people in offices and stuff. Uh, whenever certain people are in office, certain things happen and you know, over the last hundred years, I think something very similar to this happened a hundred years ago, you know, and, and it was a total detriment to the society and it destroyed a lot of people's lives and on all, in all ways, you know, and it's really just what people are willing to, to do afterwards, you know, if you're willing to step outside of your comfort zone and you know, I think it was almost like agoraphobia was set free on everybody in the world. And you had to decide if you were going to be able to accomplish beating that or just live with it and, and try to take a new, new way. And I decided not to take that new way. And a lot of people have decided to take that new way. And I don't mind either one, you know, whatever anybody wants to do, they're welcome to it. But I just decided to, you know, try to live my life like it was prior, you know, just other than like being very careful. Like, um, I don't, I don't drink anymore. I used to drink at every show. I don't smoke cigarettes anymore. I used to, it, those used to be two things that were like always a thing in my life. So I learned to not do that. I don't really go out and party ever anymore. I used to do that every night of the week. I wanted to go see another band. You know, if I wasn't playing somewhere, I wanted to go see another band. Now I don't do that. And I think it's big in part of COVID. You know, I, I literally just, I don't put myself in those types of situations anymore where I used to live for those types of situations. And I, I've definitely grown a lot in the last year and a half because of COVID, but also I think I'm just, I'm getting, you know, a little, a little more um, seasoned. I don't want to say old. <laughs> no. I'm, I'm, almost four, I'm almost 40. I'll be 40 on February 17th. That's when the tour starts actually. And, and, um, what a great birthday present. Yeah, it's going to be a dope dope birthday for sure and we're playing in southernmost in key west so it's gonna be a great birthday for sure fuck yeah dude yes um i'm so excited to live vicariously through you on this tour 
um, let's talk a little bit about your influences. I don't think we really talked about that yet. Um, to be honest with you, like one of my biggest influences, not everybody knows this either, um, is this kid that I grew up with. Um, I was, I've known him since kindergarten and he was the same age as me. He lived down the road and we were like 12 years old and I got my first guitar from my grandmother. She played in the church. So she was a big influence in my life too. She played organ for the church and she was a beast and just like the nicest person. Like she would, <laughs> she party hard. She had ganja growing in the backyard. Like uh, I'm from Sacramento originally. So like it was, it was a pretty like chill place where I grew up at. And um, Wait, did you say grandma was growing ganja in the backyard? Yeah, man. My oh, uncle. Yeah, I love I, grandma. And my uncle since the seventies was like literally growing ganja with my grandma in the backyard. Like they were the shit. That's what's and, up. Um, and so she influenced me a lot and got my first guitar when I was like eleven or twelve. And I started hanging out with this kid and his whole family was musicians. His mom and dad, his two brothers and his sister, all musicians. And they were all really good. I mean, like, wow, like good. And so I was like, dude, like, this is what I want to do. Like, you guys are amazing. Like the whole family unit was just tight too. And um, he was 13 and he was playing in this huge ska band that was a 21 and up ska band. He was playing the trumpet for him and his mom would take me and my other friend since we were kindergartners and my friend that was the trumpet player to San Francisco so he could play shows in San Francisco with these huge ska bands and we were 13 wow. and so like one of the shows I saw um, it was the, one of the first ones I ever went to he was playing and this crazy dude hopped up on stage and he's dancing and stuff and we're backstage so we're watching this happen and all of a sudden the security guys like grab him and they just yank him and throw him out the back door and like kind of rough him up a little bit you know <clears throat> and he's like beating on the back door he's like i want back in i just want to dance they're so fucking good you know and i was just like this is amazing like this is real life like at 13 i saw this so and then shortly after he gave me the legalize it CD and then that was just like a, a killer. Like I didn't really, uh, didn't really even want to focus on anything else other than that. I played soccer all through high school and smoked weed and played reggae music. And it was big in part because of my friend, Tim Conroy. Um, he plays in a band in Seattle called the, is it the Georgetown Orbits and they are a ska band and they are amazing he's the lead singer of that band he's the keyboard player for him also and he is to me he is my ambassador of inspiration like literally like he he has done so much for me and he doesn't even realize it well, you should send him a plaque or a little award that says ambassador of inspiration Are you there? Are you like put him in a t-shirt? Yes, you need to, or a hat, or something. Um, something. Oh my God. Yeah. We have Brent Weidman in the house. What's up, Brent? What's up, Brent? He played drums for that captain. He is. Is he still in Corpus? Are you still in Corpus, Brent? Um. And Jen Armstrong says, congratulations. Um, I'm sure not drinking has rewarded you with a clearer head. Definitely, definitely. What happened was um, I was, I've been drinking for like last five years. I went on like a seven year sabbatical in my twenties and I just quit drinking. And then um, I picked it back up and I drank for like the last five years, like just some stuff happened in my life. I got divorced and my wife and I had been together for a really long time, for 15 years. And um, I started drinking afterwards. And it was, at first it was just like for fun and stuff. And then it was like an everyday thing. And finally it got to the point, like the last time I drank, I think I had like 20 drinks. 
And at the end of the night, I was still coherent. I was still fine. And like, I came home and the next day I was just like, how can I be just okay with having that many drinks in my system? Like that's so unhealthy. And that day I was just like, I'm done. Like, and literally three weeks before I did the same thing with cigarettes. I was just like, I'm just so sick of every day putting this shit in my face. And I just, I quit. I quit doing a couple of bad things in my life. And I quit some other bad things for long prior to that. But those were two that I, I was worried about were going to be a detriment to my career. Mm-hmm. And, and I just, I couldn't have it in my life anymore. And now I definitely have a clearer head, you know, and music is definitely a lot different uh playing it sober completely sober is it's different i mean i still smoke ganja so i'm not completely sober i guess but uh, a lot different than drinking right completely it's totally, different. It's totally different, especially in florida because there's drinking and then there's drinking in florida <laughs> like florida drinking is like a non-stop party all the time but i mean because everybody's here to party can you like drink in the streets there like you can in um in uh in Nor- new orleans um there are some places like that like i think um fort lauderdale you can do that um i mean savannah georgia you can do that that's a it's a really odd thing to throw out there but one time <laughs> one time i was playing there and I, I was like what the hell like they stay open till four in the morning and you can just drink and walk down the streets what is this is this new orleans that was another place where i was like i can live here <laughs> i can live here and then possibly die but it's okay we'll party every night yeah uh, play music till four in the morning every morning i'm, I'm in all right <laughs> sign me up yes. uh, we got joe cole in the house what up we got curtis mark with in the house he says watch your tooth <laughs> tell him to stay away from that fridge meat Stay away from that fridge, mate. <laughs> uh, we got Chris in the house. Cheers from France. What's up, Chris? My brother. Thank you guys all for hanging out with us. If you guys have any questions for Reggae Lou, drop them in the comments. We will get to them as soon as possible. Um, yeah. Oh, we got Joshua Bear Pettis. What up, Joshua Bear? Um yeah, George, Savannah, Georgia. So Savannah, Georgia is the new NOLA, what you're saying. Well, it was when I went there. I don't know what it's like post-COVID, but <laughs> I played at this place called uh, Con- Congress Street Social Club with Trop, like, I don't know, like four years ago. And I was just like, what the hell? Like, this place is dope. Like, And literally, like, every block, there was another band of a different kind of genre of music just killing it i was like wow this is neat you know reminded me of like a little nashville or like Like austin Key west a little bit too yeah like austin too like one of the music meccas you know super fucking cool uh brent congratulations brent is in connecticut for his granddaughter's birth nice congrats brother congrats granddaddy Granddaddy of the Year Award 2021, baby. Hell yeah. Cool, man. So what's next? What What is next for Reggae Lou? Well, to be honest with you, um, it's kind of up in the air. Uh, we I really love it here. We we play here a lot, and it's, it's fun, man. But we've had some crazy offers over this last six months of, like, Somebody offered to fly us to Dubai. Somebody offered to put us up in Costa Rica. Somebody oh, said, Dubai, you have to do that. We were talking about it. but um, And then there's uh, one that said uh, Brazil, one that said uh, Europe. And I don't know, this, this, there's this one that really sticks out more than all the other ones. And... We've been talking about doing it. I don't know if we're going to really venture that way, but if we do, I wouldn't be sad about it. And it sounds like a very um, advantageous adventure for us. And uh, it's in uh, U.S. Virgin Islands. We've been talking about doing that possibly. So 
that is one option that we have been taking seriously as of late. But I really love the U.S. I've been playing all over the U.S. for a long time. I just I want to see some other stuff too. You know, I, I feel like I've seen almost every inch of the United States at this point. I think I've been on like I don't know somewhere around twenty five tours everywhere, and I want to see the islands. You know, I, I really think that would be pretty dope. And our vibe is very like palm trees and these things in the background, you know, and <laughs> I just, yeah, I really, I really would like to do some island hopping and maybe eventually go to Dubai or Europe or something like that too. But I really wanted to go check out some islands. And, so would the whole band go with you or is this like a song? Yeah. 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 I think maybe not the drummer. We might have to find another drummer to go with us to the islands. That's but, uh, cool. I can learn how to play drums, Reggae Lou. Boom. <laughs> yeah. uh, tell me what the best part and the worst part of tour life is. Holy crap. Best part are the new people and the new places. Because when anybody sees you for the first time, especially as a touring musician, you know, they really want to party and they really want to have a good time. And there's really nothing better than playing for people that know your music before you meet them. And when people start singing your songs back to you that you don't even know, like that you've never met before, it's it's really an eye opener. And like, oh, this is why I'm doing this. Like, they're so cool. <laughs> they, they took the time just to learn my a little bit of my art. You know, it's so huge. And that's why I do what I do. You know, there's so many people that are affected positively. Oh, don't get me wrong, it goes the other way too. There's plenty of people who are like, I don't really like that music. But, <laughs> But for the most part, you know, it, it goes over really well. And um, I've got to meet some of my best friend, lifelong friends just from doing what I love to do. And traveling, traveling was by far the most fun of it all. Because it really, it really humbles you and makes you realize that what is it because you're constantly thinking you're on the road you know it's, i mean unless you're like driving the whole time then you can't really think about much but um yeah i would say the best part is the new people and the new places you know and then the the worst part would be like when somebody poops on the bus obviously um <laughs> Okay. Uh, stuff like that. Or, uh, when the car breaks down and like you're really far from anything, you know, and it takes like a day for you to get back on the road, that's that's a rough part. But that's a part of the gig, you know. But um, I've had some pretty crazy shit happen to me on the road too, like stuff that you wouldn't normally hear, like like and at times that you wouldn't normally think crazy stuff like that would happen. I'll give you one example. Um, I was in Grand Junction, Colorado, playing with my homies from uh, Zoloft. And this is the craziest shit that's ever happened to me on tour. Um, we were, we played a show in their hometown, killed it. It was amazing. Their uh, drummer percussionist was like, dude, I got this rad coffee shop. You want to come by in the morning and like, I'll feed you and get you all coffeeed up, get you on the road. I was like, dude, that's amazing. Like, thank you so much. So I get there and he's not quite there yet. And the barista girls are super nice. I sit down, I'm eating this feast and drinking the best coffee. And all of a sudden this old dude walks in and he's like in his sixties. He has this huge cut on his face. He's like, got like some thing that's like pulsating. It's something yeah. out of a horror movie. So <laughs> So he comes in and he's like all zombie walking and he comes up to the counter and just knocks over everything. And he's like, I need help, help me. And we're all like, you're crazy, what is going on? 
and the girls from the baristas are they're making the coffee and stuff they're like screaming like i'll do something this guy's gonna really hurt somebody or hurt himself so i literally just like walked up behind him and grabbed him by his belt loop and like grabbed his t-shirt and like brought him to me and i was like bro you gotta go and he, and he just looked at me and he's like oh okay and i was like this is a fucking zombie i don't know what's going on so i get him outside and i like set him down on the ground and he starts like kicking his feet against the wall and i'm like what are you doing just chill out bro like the police are on the way the ambulance is coming you're gonna be okay He's like, would I need to go back in there? I was like, no, you're not going back in there. He's chilling right here. And oh, are you, you still there? there? Oh, yeah, there you are. Okay. okay. And so he starts kicking his feet off and like, or kicking his shoes off against the wall. Then like his socks come off and then like blood is coming off of his feet. And I'm like, oh my fucking God, this guy is going to kill himself right here. So like there's people filming me doing this like holding him down trying to keep him down and i was like are you really just watching this happen why aren't you helping me and all of a sudden the owner that's my buddy from zoloff he runs up he's like dude are you killing that guy i was like what are you talking about like help me bro so he jumps on him and he's like holding his feet down then all of a sudden the ambulance whoo, come up and the dude looks at me right as the ambulance is pulling up and then looks away and like projectile vomits like 10 feet and it was the gnarliest shit i've ever seen in my life so i just get up at that point i give up i get up and i'm like over in the corner like dry heaving trying not to puke the breakfast that i just ate out I'm like please don't puke that's gonna be oh, it's so gnarly so then they literally just throw him on this gurney and like wrap his head up in some mesh stuff and just throw him in the bus and they're gone and i was just like that I'll, I'll never forget that. That was the gnarliest shit I've ever seen in my. They didn't even ask me anything. They didn't ask like any report or anything. They're just like, oh, another crazy zombie guy. <laughs> I was like, okay, Grand Junction zombies. All right. Wow, was... dude, no Grand Junction <laughs> is gnar. Like, no, I'm not even like trying to be rude. If anybody is like from Grand Junction and like watching this, but I remember I played a show there with my band Pickle Fish. And we rented a hotel room and oh my God, the fucking door didn't lock the like I can't even remember. I, I like had to go ask for like an iron and an ironing board and the lady took like an hour in the back trying to find it. Like there was like hookers in the parking lot. It was the worst. Are you there? Regalou. Regalou, where'd you go? Where'd you go, go, go? Jeez. Are you yeah. there? Oh, okay. I'm still here. Can you hear me? I can hear you. But I guess hello. you're kind of frozen. Hello. I, hello. Hello, Regalu. Um, cool. Oh, there you are. Yes, good. I need the iPhone. Too. All right. Are you dying? Gonna, is your iPhone yeah, dying? I, I think it is. That's why I'm going to charge. put it on the charger right now. Oh, uh, oh. Ooh, Lindsay wanted to know where did you say your roots were in Sacramento? Is that what you said? Yeah, Carmichael, actually. Carmichael. So is that outside of Sacramento? Oh, uh, it's a suburb. Yep. Jen, Jen says, thanks for the story. She can't wait for the nightmares tonight. Thanks to you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jen. <laughs> That's like just one example of like tour life though, right? You never know what you're gonna get. Like some days it's really fun and great. And then some days you have like people projectile vomiting like fucking a foot away from your face. Like Yeah, it was the gnarliest stuff I've ever seen. Um, I remember one time I played in San Marcos and um this one chick I walked into the girl's bathroom and there was this chick passed out on the fucking floor naked and she had like this huge cut on her forehead. Um, and so like I'm trying to help her up and what happened was she was wearing like a one piece romper. And I guess when she was done using the bathroom, she was just trying to pull up the romper and instead she like fell forward and like hit her, her head on the tile sink and like passed out on the floor in the bathroom. Jesus whole thing it was a whole fucking thing um 
Lindsay says two thirds of her children were born in Carmichael. Oh, two, What's out that? Three, two out of three of her kids were born in Carmichael. <laughs> Carmichael's legit, man. I uh, I love it out there. My brother still lives there, actually. Most of my family lives there still. Awesome. So do you visit regularly? Um, I went there two years ago. That was the last time I saw my family. But um, since COVID ha has happened, I haven't been going really anywhere up until... Uh, up until this month, I'll be going somewhere out of Florida. So that'll be the first time. Woo! That's going to be super exciting for your birthday, Reggie Lou. You get to go on tour. Woo, woo, woo! I can't um, wait. I can't believe it's really a thing. I'm so happy for it. That's so fucking sick, dude. I cannot wait to just even play a fucking show. Um, I've been feeling. I think the last show I played was on Valentine's Day last year. Womp, 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 womp. Yeah. Um, hey, who would you like to collaborate with next? Do you have any anybody in mind? Mm, it's funny you say that because one of them actually was on the feed. <laughs> um, I would love to collaborate with Soulfire. I oh. love it. So, yeah, we've been in talks about doing it prior, but we've never done it. I would definitely love to work with that guy. Uh, I met him in Texas when we were on tour out there. And then I come, came and hang out, hung out with him in Cali when he was playing out there. And I just like his vibes, his rootsy sound. Like he's such a nice dude too, just such a humble family man. And like, just, he's really good. He's, he reminds me of like Buju, but with more inflection. And that's hard to do. Like he just, he's got power behind his voice and I really love it. Yeah, I've known him, let's see, I met him fucking probably like six or seven years ago when I was playing with Johnny Love, and we went to Galveston, and we played a show with them, and at the time, we were playing, uh, or we covered a song of, um, what's the band that Mark was in with Soulfire? Um, the who? Uh, Mark. Board was in in a band with with Chief uh, Soulfire. I don't the know band that that play, the band that plays Bloody Red Eyes. Was that Shark Attack? Yes, Shark Attack. And uh, yes. so we, we played Bloody yes. Red Eyes uh, in Johnny Love's band, and I fucking love that song. Yes, um, that was literally one of my favorite songs to play in that band. Like, oh, it's the it's the shit. Like. Once again, back it all goes back to Mark Board, man. It does. It does. And you're kind of looking a little Mark Boardish right now. I'm just gonna say, I look at you and have very Mark Board vibes coming from you. Maybe that's why we're such good buddies. You know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Twinkies. Um, and and the Soul Fire did a did a song with uh, who was it? DJ Dusty. And it was like a dance song, and I did this dance video for him, and it was just great. So much fun. He's so much fun. Oh, I saw that actually. That was awesome. Yeah, that video was dope as shit too. Thank you. Good time yeah. for sure. He brings the party. I will be looking forward to that collaboration um, with Soulfire. I'm sure it will drop very soon. Um, that's family right there, man. Texas family again. I swear, it, like all comes back like in this fucking full full circle. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of great music that comes out of Texas, man. Yeah, yes. Um, so I want you to play maybe one more song for us if you want okay. to. Yeah, That's sure. Fun. Um thank you. <sighs> All right, I'll do one that I wrote a long time ago. Uh I've been playing this song since uh, uh, probably like since the very beginning of my reggae career. I think it was the first song that I wrote for the for the first reggae band I was in. I was like 19 or 20. It was like soon after uh, uh, Wyclef Jean and all of them started getting really popular. So there's a reference in there to him, obviously. But uh, yeah, I'll play it for you. <laughs> Also sounds differently as a solo artist. Uh. 
Back in the day when I listened to Sublime over and over again, a thousand times I press rewind. Jumped out to Marley again and again. Songs of freedom are my soul fueled medicine. Why Clef Jean if I were president? I wouldn't put my people through this punishment. Them belly full while we're all hungry. Change up the system, take away that money. Rise up, rise up, rise up. Now everybody will sing. Rise up. Rise up, rise up now, revolt and save history. But la da 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 la da 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 la da 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 la da 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 From good to great is what we have. From stone to skate to leaving rehab. I build a house with a stone. The builder refused with a love I can't hide. Well, I will never lose. Soon you will find, yeah, the block that you should choose. As for me and mine, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll sit back and light the fuse. Rise up, rise up, rise up. Now everybody says, rise up. Rise up, rise up now, revolt and save history. But la da 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 Said all my friends and my family, together we can be free. Singing unity, you and me, together we can be free. Oh, unity, you and me, together, together, yeah, yeah. Rise up, rise up. Rise up now, everybody said. Rise up, rise up, rise up now, revolt, save history. La 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 <laughs> so fucking good uh these people are cracking me up in the comments because your guitar is like disappearing as you're playing it um lindsay says you're the most talented air guitar player she's ever seen <laughs> yes life goals life goals <laughs> Oh my God, that is so funny. So uh, a few more questions, then we're gonna wrap it up. We've already been going an hour, um, but I've been having such a great time with you. I just can't let you go right now. Um, Do you mind if I go grab a nugget and smoke some ganja with you? Yes, go, go. Grab, right back. grab the ganja. Um, Chris Luna, I would totally pay to see you as a solo acoustic at great job. Chris Luna, hit him up in the DMs after we're done with this. You too can have Reggae Lou at your next party. This is true. Hello, mother. Thanks for hanging out. Dawn, Sunshine, Lindsay, David Shaw, what is up? Jen Armstrong, all the family in the house. Thank you guys for kicking it with me and, and Reggae Lou for the past hour. We've been having a great time. If you're just joining us, make sure that you rewind and watch this episode over again. Um, that was actually the second song that we got to hear tonight and it's fucking badass. Reggae Lou's about to go on tour with Autic Empire and Peter Dante. Um, they'll be hitting up Florida and Texas. So if you are in either of those states, make sure you go check them out um, when they hit your town. Isn't that right, Reggae Loop? Yes, ma'am. We've actually got some uh, extra little additions, too. 
I guess uh, Kyle Rising from Sensi Trail is going to be joining us on the Texas run of the tour now. Yay. So that's awesome. I can't wait for that. Isn't that dude from Cali, right? Yeah, his San Diego boy too, yeah. Sick. What's up, Ouija? Back. He's back in the house. Oh, you had to go take a little break there, the Ouija? Okay. <laughs> My mom says pass it on over via the virtual herbal connection. <laughs> Yes, agreed. <laughs> What's up, Zane and Goody, 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 Goody in the house? Woo! Um, so let's talk about your biggest pet peeve in the music industry, Mr. Ray Gay Lou. You, there must be plenty. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> um, my biggest pet peeve. Let's see. That is a that is a tough one there. Um, biggest pet peeve in the reggae industry, or just the music industry in general. Mm, I mean, <clears throat> to me, I don't really have any uh, problems per se. I think it's all about you yourself. You know, it's like wherever you see yourself in the music industry. Um, I don't mean to evade the question. No, it's okay. I think that's absolutely heartwarming. I, I really think it's true. Like, it's all about your perception of yourself. I think that if you believe you should be in some place in the music industry, on whatever level it may be, it's up to you to get there. Nobody's going to do it for you. And... There's definitely a such thing as a one hit wonder, you know, but it probably took them 10,000 songs to get that one hit. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's not an overnight success as far as like the bands that I've followed that are now successful and um, it myself, like, I don't feel like I'm like, successful by any means but i definitely have a family that i love and i cherish and i would never give it up and it's all because of i just believed in what i was doing and as long as you stick to that the music industry is whatever you want it to be if you want it to be sex drugs and rock and roll it'll be sex drugs and rock and roll if you want it to be purity and family you can have that too it's just whatever you decide you want it to be. If you want to be swayed by people, you can choose that. If you want to be the leader, you can be that. You can do whatever you want. It's up to you to do it, you know? And I think anything is possible if you just put your mind to it, you know? I love that so much. And Ronnie said, shit, yeah, brother, shit, yeah! <laughs> Woo! Love you, Ronnie. And that's so fun. That's such a great answer. I love that so much. Um, that is a great way of putting it. And I will definitely take notes and put it in my black book so I can read it again later. Yeah. Um, I did really love the part in the interview where you said you kind of dreamt of one day living in Florida. And then here you are a few years later and you're living in Florida. Um, you're kind of dreaming of, you know, visiting some other islands and you're already kind of putting the work in motion to make that happen. So yeah. are you a true believer that your dreams can come true as long as you work hard enough on them? I think manifestation is a definite reality. You know, I think I live, I live that reality. Um, just sitting here talking to you now, like 20 years ago, if you told me that I would be a full-time musician in Florida, I'd be like, what do you mean? Like, no way, no me. I live in Michigan, like it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. But I just, I just kept plugging away what I believed in and it took me to this place, you know, and I always tried to set goals, like throughout the whole time of being a musician, I always was like, what do I want to accomplish next? You know, a big one for me at first, when I was in Michigan, I was like, man, I really just want to open up for Badfish. It was like 13, 13 years ago when Badfish was coming through there. It's like, man, I'd really like to open up for him. Then a few years later, I opened up for him and I was like, that was rad, you know? And that was when they still had like Scotty Don't was their 
opener, which is Bad Fish's original band. Oh, wow. And, and they were super awesome people. And I was like, that's just another reassurance of this is why I want to do what I want to do is because there's so many people in the industry that were just like, they were just a band and they did something and it took them to a different level. And, and I saw that possibility of being able to do it as a, a lifestyle or a career instead of just a, uh, we're just going to hang out and play music on the weekends every now and then, you know, like, yeah. That's a super inspiring story. Um, you're inspiring so many people. I hope you realize that um, just by, you know, your social media posts, just by you, like, still touring, still doing the music, um, still living the dream. Thank you. Um, how, let's talk a little bit. I know we mentioned the tour earlier, but how did you and Ronnie hook up to put this tour together during the middle of, like, what some people would say is a crisis? So... I think it was three years ago, me and him and Dante ended up in a hotel room on my birthday. And Again, your birthday is the common denominator here. <laughs> yeah, it really was. And then we partied until like four in the morning. And then like two years ago on my birthday, we were playing out here, or last year, we were playing out here before COVID. And it was amazing. It was with uh, Treehouse and Bubble Love and Autic Empire. And it was just epic. And then like me and Ronnie were just talking over like four or five months ago and we were just like dude let's do something for my birthday again like it's another birthday show let's do let's hang out and uh then we we're like well let's let's put together a, a a run you know let's do a bunch of shows in Florida and you you drive out here and then we'll drive to Texas and then we'll drive back home afterwards and we've done it completely different now. It's evolved into a totally different thing now. Now what's happening is like they're all flying out here and they're all hopping on our van and then we'll do all the tour stops here oh. and then they'll fly back home. And then we're all flying out there, hopping on their van oh. and doing tour stops there and then we fly back home. So it's like totally different than what we originally thought and we were just manifesting it uh, once again, back to manifestation. We are manifesting an idea and then it turned into, let's get Dante on board. Let's fly. Let's do all this different style of stuff. And yeah, we just rolled with the punches. And now we got this thing going on here. <laughs> oh, fun. I see you guys will be in Corpus Christi. Yeah. 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 We're doing. Uh, that be a lot of fun. I really wanted to get into Galveston too. I wanted that one to be right. Where is it? Right, right there. Where it says TBA. You see that? Yeah. <laughs> but uh didn't quite work out that way um but you never know you never know what's gonna happen so yeah for sure just keep manifesting those dreams because you're really good at it apparently yeah <laughs> make, it, make it happen make it happen um we are gonna start wrapping this up i have two more questions for you if anybody has any questions for Reggae Lou, drop them in the comments you guys have had a lot of really awesome comments but not any questions that's okay because you know what we're taking care of the questions for you tonight folks <laughs> that's what a good interviewer does <laughs> um okay if you um could pick any five musicians dead or alive to hang out with at a party who would they be and what would you serve them You mean like food wise? Mm -hmm. Five musicians, dead or alive, could hang out with them. What would I serve them? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, I would probably say. That's so tough, man, because I've met most of my heroes in the music game, you know, so um, it would probably be like Gregory Isaac. Okay. I would probably want to meet him and, and talk with him because I've heard from some of my heroes in the music game, like, he was a really nice dude and just really genuine and humble when I would. I would love to glean anything that he would have to say because I'm sure it would be brilliant and captivating, you know. Um, 
and I would probably feed him whatever he wanted. <laughs> probably something I tell, I'm guessing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you're picking yeah. up the Gregory Isaacs? Uh, I mean, if if I can go more, I would. I, I could list them off, but I mean, definitely him and uh, Dennis Brown and um, who else? My favorites, you know. Um, that's a tough one. Sly and Robbie. I would probably give Sly and Robbie whatever they wanted just to sit in with me on one song. <laughs> Anything. Any kind of food. All the food. All, all the food. food. All, all the food. Here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how do you think you would pick their brain about music, about life, about everything? Well, definitely about music. Um, I think uh, life is music, you know. Um, I think that it, it's all intertwining. And I've heard a lot of stories about all different kinds of musicians that from all the levels and the ones that seem to get up to the top, you know, their stories are a little bit more remembered because so many people have words of wisdom that they gave to them. But um, I would probably do a little bit of both and ask them about their families and their, you know, their background, you know, because I mean, this this music thing is is my love and my heart and soul, but my family is what keeps me driving doing this music like I have four boys I have a, a three-year-old a six-year-old a, a 12 year old and a 14 soon to be 15 year old boy that are always with us every single day and our 12 year old comes to the shows almost all the time and he's the biggest hustler he can literally set up my whole PA system by himself oh. he's a G like he He's, they've been to Cali Roots. They've been to, you know, uh, Summer Arts Fest. We played there with that captain. It was an amazing festival that these little boys got to enjoy, like, all kinds of different things they got to see. Like, they got to be all over the world or all over the United States in the bus with us, you know? Like, they just, they're really also making, helping me mold me into being a better person and just a more patient and understanding person because I have no choice than to be that for them because they're gleaning all the, the things from me. So whatever I show them is what they're going to become, you know, and well, they'll, they'll say that's not the case that they don't look up to me, but then they'll tell me that they do and they love me and they're, they're so appreciative and they're so this, and then when they're mad, you know, they say a different thing, but, um, that relationship is, is definitely defining me as a person. And it makes me a better person because of it. If I didn't have them in my life, I think I would have traveled a much different road. And I'm very thankful for my family, as I'm sure all the artists out there that are um, every day playing, you know, because that's why they're doing it. They're not doing it for the money. They're not doing it for the fame. They're doing it for their family. So one day they can be like, here, this was, this is all for you. Like, this is the empire I built for you. Yeah. You can do whatever you want with it, but it's yours. And yeah, I mean, if you don't want to do anything, you don't have to, but just know that I was doing this all for you. Oh, I love you so much. Oh my God. I love you so much. Um, Jen says she has learned a lot about you tonight and she is seriously so impressed with the quality of your character. Much respect. Um, and she's super yeah. stoked for the Florida, Texas run. Um, also, I saw a comment here from Scott Wise of Underground Roots. The Sunshine Show is a huge supporter of Underground Roots. And Scott wants to hook you up with some Underground Roots uh, merch for your tour coming up. So make sure yeah. to contact Scott when we are done with this live stream. Will uh, do. Thanks, Scott. Oh, yeah. can I also name one of our sponsors? Uh, a big shout out to Salt Cured for uh, 
she actually designed this flyer and uh, she's sponsoring some of our uh, clothing on the tour as well. Awesome. Well, it looks like you don't have to buy any new clothes for the tour, Reggae Lou. You are going to be all pimped out and ready to go and rock and roll. Um, cool. So we have one question from Chris Luna. Do you feel reggae music has changed in the past 20 years? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I, when I was younger, I always thought about you know, ska is like this huge thing that has this fluctuation that goes like this. I think reggae does the same thing, too. You know, it has that kind of ebb and flow where it's like really powerful and really popular. And then all of a sudden it'll kind of fade off the map a little bit. Then it'll come back and kind of go back and forth. But um, I think that once again, it goes back to what I was talking about earlier. Like you can get whatever you want out of the reggae music. Like you can find whatever kind of music you're looking for. There's still some of the best dub reggae in the world being created daily by artists from Europe and Australia and New Zealand and all over the world. I mean, there's some artists in California that are mind blowing. This guy, Lujan Reggae, shout out to Lujan Reggae. Like you are a scientist, you are a pro at dub mastering. DM Khan, same thing. Another dude that's just like a master of, of that traditional sound that everybody is looking for. Like, but, then you got the newer guys, you know, like um, the Ian Young and Gary Larison out of LA. Like some of those dudes are making equal beats to all the greatest reggae writers and uh, producers of all time, you know, and there's just so many, so many outlets out there. I think if anything, reggae has gotten better just because there's more people making more music. And because of that, just like anything, when you put more heads on it, it just gets bigger and bigger, you know, and, and better. And that's, yeah. That's my answer. Love that. And we love you. Thank love you, you too. so much for hanging out with me for the past hour and some change. Um, you guys, we have had such a good fucking time. Let the people know how we can support you, Reggae Lou. Oh, for sure. You could go to reggaelu.com. We have t-shirts and stuff, all kinds of stuff for sale on reggaelu.com. Um, we also have uh, reggae underscore lou on Instagram. And then um, buy tickets to the tour. There's plenty of tickets all over the internet that you can purchase for the tour that's coming up. Um, we're going to have t-shirts for sale that are actual tour t-shirts at, at the shows too. Let me think. Am I missing anything? check out fire on spotify it's one of the songs i sang earlier we just released that last month it's uh it's a fun song and it's catchy and it seems like everywhere we go people are constantly like do you wanna because in, in that song it's like hey do you wanna do you wanna smoke some fire marijuana well people will literally walk up to me and be like do you wanna and i'll be like i didn't get it at first a few people were doing it then like it just kept happening and i was like yes i do <laughs> so do you have shirts that say do you wanna we actually just started making some of those actually so. oh money making ideas here folks That's uh, right folks, um yeah go buy the merch go buy the music go buy all the things go follow this man on all social media outlets do you have a youtube you drop in the videos yeah on reggae lou on youtube too yeah there's a whole bunch of videos on youtube Woo! <laughs> all things Oh man, I've had a great time with you tonight. I'm gonna get this wrapped up. Um, is there anything that you want to tell the folks before we skedaddle out of here? Um, I think I've said enough. Uh, I really, I really appreciate you having me on the show, dude. Um, I, I've known you over the Facebook thing for many years. I, I was lucky enough to get introduced to you back in. Uh, San Diego when you guys played that show and you know it's a pleasure meeting you and thank you for having me on the show I really appreciate you and, uh, hopefully we'll, we'll catch up with you guys again soon out there you know I, I definitely would like to come back like I said my family's out in Cali so I would love to come and see my family over in Sacktown and like 
there, I have some other extended family in Humboldt County too that are like really amazing. I wouldn't mind coming out that way too. So yeah, yeah. but let's manifest something and put it out there in the world. We just did. Um, let's make something happen, man. Hopefully in the summer, you know, we can you know do something special. Maybe do like a pot farm tour or something fun like that. That would be dope. Literally. Oh, yeah! Um, <laughs> fuck yeah, Reggae Lou. Keep up the great work. Remember, you are so inspiring. So much fucking motivation for all the people out there that are looking to do what you're doing. You are doing it right. You have been rocking and rolling. And thank you because I'm telling you, I have been living vicariously through you for the past year. And it's been beautiful. Thank you so much. <laughs> I love you, brother. Have a great time on tour. And we will work on that pot farm tour. Um, and let's talk again when you get back from tour. Oh, yeah. I'm down. All right, man. You have a good night. Stay safe. Say hi to your family. Big hugs and love all around. Um, and I'll see you soon. Blessings to you and your family also, my friend. Thank you, brother. We'll see everybody later. Take care. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.